still with you and you know we, we serve a good God and his, 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 his wisdom is more than we can even fathom you know purpose purpose is called, will cause you to be there in your bedroom and you can get saved there you can be converted wherever you are so just trust God this man that as the word comes you are hearing the live word and you are hearing word that unbroken and means that has come in directly from the Lord hallelujah hallelujah saying we just want to thank God another man for who of us are here and we have with us this morning our apostle is back with us. It seems as if these days, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, it seems as if these days he's trying to let us get used to being without her for some time. I don't really like that, but we, <laughs> I don't know what is that mean, but God is still in, God is still in control. Amen? God is still in control, so we just got to be at peace, whatever it is sometime, you know, things go against our will, so we just need to be encouraged and know that he's in control of our life, situation, um, circumstance, whatever is taking place, so once we know that we will be at peace and at, at ease in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we ready for the word this morning? Hallelujah. Are we ready for the word today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So please, um, just be attentive and let the Holy Ghost lead us, let us be quiet, let us, um, you know, not be distracted, don't, um, whatever, as I said, we, come in, we came in earlier on our mind, let us just trust God in what he can do in our life. Let us not give up hope because, you know, we know that there is hope beyond, there is life beyond this life. So whatever we are going through today, it is just to, to, to buffet us, just to, just to kill flesh. And we need to just kill flesh and just persist, right? Because we all are going through and we can see, we, we are blessed that we are hearing a true word. We are hearing a word that we can go back into a Bible and, and, and confirm it. We are not hearing twisted, we are not hearing words that we, we have to be searching dictionary or whatever for the Holy Bible. That is, that is our map. That is what we can go to to confirm that we are here in the true word of God. Hallelujah. And there is not many that are, that are as fortunate as us today. So let us give God thanks and let us just not hear the word but also manifest it. Let us let our characters and our lives show wherever we are at, at our workplace, at school, wherever we go on the street and all of that. Let, 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 let a report be a good report. Hallelujah. Because we know we believe in perfection and we cannot enter in without, with a spot of whatever it is, sin. Hallelujah. So let us just be encouraged. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. You want to stand this morning while we welcome our apostle as the Lord will lead her today. We just pray that she's in good health and everything. She's not too tired and all of that. She's looking a bit, but we know the Holy Ghost can lift her. Wherever she at, the Holy Ghost will meet her. <laughs> Be encouraged, Doc. <laughs> Be encouraged, and we all love you, so God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you When I was in trouble You brought me over Nobody but you, Lord Nobody but you Nobody but you, Lord Nobody but you Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. My friend, Lord, you've been my friend, Lord. Nobody but you. You've been my friend, Lord. Nobody but you. When I was in trouble, you brought me over. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. But you, nobody but you, Lord. 
Oh, give him a praise. He's worthy this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all of our praises. Glory to God. You may be seated if you can. Bless the Lord. We want to say good morning to our online church. And those of you who are viewing by way of television this morning, you have tuned in to Sunday Morning Live right here in Kingston, Jamaica. Come on. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And as Pastor Nigel said, glory to God, you can receive Christ right there. If you don't have him, you can receive him right there in your bedroom, your living room, your den. Hallelujah. You can receive Christ. You can be edified. You can be built up. Hallelujah. You can be delivered right now. Glory to God. Just stay tuned and let's see what God has to say to the church today. Come on. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. We're going to be continuing our study in We Are One from this particular study guide from the World, not World Conference, from Founders Week. Yes, Founders Week back in October. Amen. Last month we did this over in Fort Lauderdale. We are one. I believe that's the title. We are one. And we're going to be continuing that today. Glory to God from a chapter in here that is most urgent and um, if you would if those of you that are viewing by way of television if you would like to have a copy of this particular study guide the information will be placed on the screen so just keep watching amen it's going to pop up in a minute amen you can get it out of my faith library mary banks faith library dot com yes dot com Amen. MaryBanksFaithLibrary.com. So at, go there and look for the study guide, We Are One. You can download it or you can order it and we'll ship it to you, whatever your pleasure be. And also the, the videos and, and CDs that came about uh, that were produced as a result of this teaching in Fort Lauderdale last month. This is an awesome word. Amen. We are one. We've been dealing with oneness for over about a year now, ever since last World Conference. Isn't that right? Amen. Last year, World Conference, we've been talking about one with God, one with God, one with God. Amen. And I'm excited about it. Bless the Lord. I want to go to chapter three in our guide today. And this chapter makes, makes this lesson very personal. What are my issues? What are my issues? Last time we talked about the Great Gulf. I'm not so sure we've done with that. We'll probably be going back and forth uh, to these chapters as the Lord gives us fresh manna. What are my issues? Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we must awaken out of our vain imaginations and embrace the Father and his will for our lives. That's the opening statement. We've got to come up out of vain imaginations. We've got to deal with God as he is. And we've got to embrace our salvation for what it is. Amen? Are we hearing God? Bless the Lord. Amen. And... Um, I'm excited about the fact that God is being very specific and he's allowing us to, to hear and understand, to be confronted with the things that specifically affect us. And that's his mercy. That's his mercy. God want a people that will serve him. He want a people that, that have transcended the cares of this life, this world. And they no longer... They no longer embrace the world, but they embrace the will of God. And he's going to have that people. In fact, he already does. He has some people who don't care anything about this world. Amen. They don't want anything out of the world. They just want to make it to heaven. They just want to get to heaven. Anybody, anybody with me on that one? Amen. Glory to God. I just want to make it in. I don't care all the rewards and all of that stuff. I just want to get in. Amen. Glory to God. Just let me get in. Amen. Getting in will be the reward enough. Praise the Lord. To spend eternity with Christ. Amen. Glory to God would be enough of a reward. Glory to God. Because the alternative is just, it's just unspeakable. It's just too 
horrible to even speak of, glory to God, going to heaven. To even, to, to going to hell is something you don't even want to consider. C come on, glory to God. I don't want to be, I don't want to go to hell and then be cast into the lake of fire too. Come on, somebody. Amen. God is good, isn't he? He's good. And he loves us enough to talk specifically to us. Now that, that is just, that's just so profound that God love us so much that he would talk directly to us and he would ask us, what are our issues? What are our issues? Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to go over to uh, the bottom of the page, down here at the bottom of the page. Uh, first of all, I think it's uh, the hidden things of dishonesty. That's, that's the heading I'm under. Uh, page one, page uh, 11 in your manual, chapter 3, the hidden things of dishonesty. Hallelujah. I think it's cruel and hypocritical for ministers, uh, not only ministers, but even just uh, lay members, uh, what we call lay members, to be aware of another person's uh, faults and never speak to that person about them. That's hypocritical. Um, and that's something that saints must break themselves out of. Someone asked me this morning about a, a person that they, want, they, they wanted to know how would I uh, spiritually assess this person in ministry. And I said to them, I said, he would be awesome if he ever fell in love with people. Hallelujah. Got the articulation of the word, knows the word, understands the word, and is very faithful in natural things. Very dutiful. But don't love people. They were, con this pastor was considering or having this person ordained, I, I, I suppose. And they called me this morning, bless the Lord, to discuss it. This is in one of our other churches. And I said to him, I said, when it comes to natural things, he's very dutiful, very faithful. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to people, he needs to fall in love with people. Because a minister's existence must be for people. Are you hearing God? A minister's, a minister's existence must be for people. Our purpose is for people to take that thing that we have, that God has compacted in us, and to perfect it in others, to pass that along to others and perfect them inside of it. And when we don't do that, when we don't do that, if we don't have a heart to do that, we are not worthy to be called ministers. If we're not in love with people and if we don't want to pass on what God has given us to people, then what is our purpose? What is our real true purpose? We don't have one. We don't have one that really excites God. So until you fall in love with people, until people are your main concern, until you esteem others higher than yourself, until you bear the burden of others, you're not worthy to be called a minister. Now, Jamaica, as well as all of you that are listening and watching by way of television, the church, the church, the members in the church sit inside of this um, private, their own little private boxes. And we allow one another to sit in those boxes. We do. We allow one another to, to sit in that box and as long as, as long as we're in our little private boxes, then we are alienated from one another. And that box is strengthened by brothers and sisters that allow others, other brothers and sisters, to remain in that box. You strengthen the walls. You strengthen the walls. And, that, and now we have that great divide, that gulf, that separates us from one another. Pride is what builds the box. 
Pride causes us to get in our own little box and we don't want nobody bothering us. We don't bother anybody and we don't want nobody bothering us. And that also includes stay out of my business. Stay out of my business. But let me say this to you. The character of a son of God is everybody's business. Come on, somebody. The character of a son of God is everyone's business. Are you hearing me? And so when you see your brother or sister in a fault, the scriptures say, ye that are spiritual, go to them. That's confrontation. But notice who he says to go, the ones that are spiritual. Hello. Because people that are spiritual are not condemning. They don't come in judgmentalism. Are you hearing God? They don't come to judge. They come to deliver. Are you hearing God? Amen. And if you're not spiritual enough, maybe you may not be the one that need to confront someone. If you're not spiritual, are you hearing God? Maybe you may not be the one. But I will say this, if you don't become spiritual, you won't make it in. Are you working with God? Amen. But we have to come out of these boxes. Confrontation is a catalyst for change. The sheep in the house of God, the children, God's children are just like any other children. They will do whatever they're allowed to do. They'll get away with whatever they think they can get away with. Are you hearing God? And sometimes they need to be confronted. Sometimes we need to confront one another and say, wait a minute, that's not God. Why are you doing this? Why do you think like that? Hallelujah. Now, if I were to preach now from experiential knowledge and observation, many of you reside with each other all the time. Your friends, you walk up and down with each other, and you see the faults in one another. But there's some people that you dare not confront. Hello. It's getting quiet in here. There's some people you dare not confront because of their demeanor, the way they carry themselves, the aura that they walk in. That thing we call aura is nothing more than this, this spiritual exhalation. That exhalation they walk in, it, it forbids anyone to get close enough to say, you know what, you're just wrong. Hallelujah. I was in a counseling session with uh, some pastors, and the person that we were counseling was talking and talking and talking and giving these explanations as to his disposition. And he's just talking and talking and... Um, and I was waiting. I just sit there and waited till he finished. And when he finished, I said to this person, you're just arrogant and full of pride. Now, the reason I said that is because it's true. And when a person is, when, when, when the Holy Spirit confronts, see, if, if, let me show you something. If the Holy Spirit confronts you, And you give an explanation as to why you are where you are. And that explanation is just not real. The Holy Spirit is not going to stop right there listening to your explanation. The Holy Spirit is going to say, that's not real. That's not why you do what you do. The Holy Spirit is going to go all the way to the root of that. And the Holy Spirit is not going to allow you to crawl inside of those cracks that we like to crawl in. Now, those of us who will go into those cracks when people crawl into them, if, if you'll, if you'll, uh, hallelujah. If you'll, if you'll follow me here for a moment. Those of us who will follow a person into that crack that they try to create for themselves, we are called bold. Bold. But that's not something that should be unique to one or two people. That should be, that all of us should engage in that. 
Glory to God. If your sister or your brother is trying to evade an issue, then you go on and, 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 and deal with it. Don't, and if they get upset, they're just getting upset with the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is remain in the Spirit. Are you hearing God? Just remain in the Spirit. And if you remain in the Spirit, their, their anger is toward God, not you. They're dealing with the Holy Ghost, not really you. They're dealing with the Holy Spirit. So if you, the, where we miss God in confrontation, let me show you what we miss him at in confrontation, especially spouses, <laughs> especially spouses and close friends. When we confront, when we confront a person that has a fault and we say, you know what, that's not righteous. What you're doing is just not righteous. And that person may get upset, may get upset and may retaliate. And usually the, the retaliation comes with, well, you do such and such a thing and you do, you know what I say? That, that may be true, but we're talking about you now. We'll deal with me tomorrow, but right now we're dealing with you. And that person may get angry and more angry and more angry, praise the Lord, and reject that counsel, may totally reject it. And where you'll miss the mark at is when they reject that counsel, you'll get angry. You'll move from being an ambassador of Christ Hello. You move, you leave that estate, and now it becomes about you. And the reason you get angry is because they didn't adhere to your counsel. Come on. You take the place of Christ. And so when they retaliate with their anger, you reciprocate with yours. Because it is no longer about them coming to righteousness now. It's about them obeying what you said. Come on, are you hearing God? And that's where we miss it at. And spouses, especially, especially husbands and wives, glory to God, if they tell that wife something and, and, and she doesn't, <clears throat> and she doesn't obey it, that husband get all bent out of shape, hallelujah, especially that husband because he's the authority in the house. And she didn't obey his authority. That's, she just, I mean, she just really upset his apricot. But if it was about that bringing that wife, bringing that spouse to Christ, he would, stay, he would remain in the spirit. Because he would always, see, when you remain in, a, in the spirit, you keep a door open and you set a trail for the person to follow. Come on, are you hearing God? The moment you move into the flesh, the person doesn't have to move because they're already in the flesh. Are you hearing God? But if you remain in the spirit, now you, you set a trail. You open the door and you set a trail for that person to follow you to the spirit. Now, someone just sent me a note and says, can I explain the difference between being uh, um, confronting without being judgmental? That's very simple. Judgmentalism means that you've already condemned the person. That's the difference. I can confront you and tell you what you're doing wrong without condemning you and sending you to hell. Hello? Are you hearing God? When I judge you, I've already passed sentence on you. I take away your hope. Judgmentalism takes away the hope. It, it renders final judgment. It doesn't give you an opportunity. It leaves no opportunity for you to change or repent. It, it comes with condemnation. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing him? It's quiet in here this morning. Hallelujah. I want to talk about some of the things that, that may be our issues. Now, I just talked about confrontation, the lack of it. But I want to make sure that when, we, when you leave here with uh, confrontation, that the principle of confrontation, you leave with the right one, that we confront in the spirit. 
And the word is always the authority. The spirit is always the character. And the word is always the authority. Are you hearing God? If we remain in the spirit. Hmm? When I have to deal with people and they're, they're off course and they're running, ripping and running. I say, well, what does the word say? Because my opinion is of none effect. What matters is what does the word say? What does the word say? Are you hearing God? Amen. So let us leave here knowing that spiritual people ought to be the ones that confront. Because as the word says, it's hard to, to get the little mote out of, your, out of your brother's eye when you got a beam in yours. Hello. Your brother got a little splendor in his and you got a whole tree in yours. Hello. Are you hearing God? So let us be very careful that ye who are spiritual confront. Hmm? And that doesn't mean that, that I've been, uh, you know, you've been walking in the spirit ever since you've been saved. No. It just means that you're walking in the spirit now. That's what that means. That means that I'm walking in the spirit now because if I wasn't walking in the spirit last year, that sin is thrown into a sea of forgetfulness. So it has no validity when I come to deal with you today. Come on, are you hearing God? It has no validity So, because pe people will bring up your past sins in order to, to, to uh, counteract your confrontation. They'll bring up something that they know about you. Glory to God. Oh, don't get upset. Just say, yeah, you know, I did that and God forgave me. Own up to it. You're right. You're absolutely right. But God forgave me, and he'll forgive you too if you get straight. Hallelujah. Come on. Let us look at some of these issues. Are you working with me? Selective obedience. Selective obedience. <clears throat> we tend to obey the things that are what? Convenient. We obey God when it's convenient for us to obey him. When it's convenient. Let me tell you something. It's possible to be in the church for 25 years and never obey God. It's possible. It's possible to be in the church for 25 years and be confronted by God and not obey him. It's possible to be in the church for 25 years and God confront you to change and you never change. That's possible. God can confront you every year for 25 years and you never change. That is possible. Some people don't think that that's possible. Oh, yes, it is. It's possible. It's possible. There, there, there are some that that the, the counsel that they, that, that, you, that they were given 29 years ago, that same counsel would be given to them today. The same counsel. Hallelujah. So we obey sometimes when it's convenient to obey. Hallelujah. Listen to this. I cannot sit here and name all the things we neglect to obey, but it is certain each of us know and realize what they are. You know the things that you're not doing right. You know what? You know what really, what really gets, what really gets, um, what really is bad. Let's just say this. What's really bad? If you have the Holy Spirit, then you know when you're doing something wrong. Is that right? You know when you're doing something. Is that is that is that true, saints of God? You, when you, because you have the Holy Spirit, you know when you're wrong. Are you hearing God? Now, one of the things that the enemy tried to confront me with in coming down here to, to your nation is a difference in culture. Now, let me show you something here. And this, this is something that we really need to deal with. Some people couldn't understand why I would be so adamant 
about certain principles that seemingly conflict with your culture, such as love, consideration, kindness. Let's just go there. When I said here selective obedience, and obeying when it's convenient, most, well, let me say what I've encountered, what I've seen here. And I'm, and I'm, I'm saying here because I am here, okay? Because I'm sure this is universal. This is universal. But uh, let me use an, an example here. And this is not, this is just hypothetical. Don, being an entrepreneur, you know, they have business. Dr. Leverage knows they have business. Doc, he's a doctor, very prominent. Don is a very prominent entrepreneur. And let us say that Jackie did something, did something wrong, or out of, out of, outside the boundaries of the faith. And let us say that someone uh, that Don doesn't really deal with that, that much and maybe uh, may not even have a job, may live in a little tin, what do you call those? What do you, what do you call them? Quad, what is that? A little small, little shack, a little one room. <clears throat> she knows this person, she just knows them. She doesn't really deal that much with them. That person could come along and do the same thing that Jackie did and Don would find it easy to forgive Jackie and difficult to forgive this quad person. Do you understand what I'm saying? This person that doesn't have any substance, this person that doesn't have nice clothes, doesn't have a, an education, and is doing the same thing that Jackie did. Did the same thing. She would find it difficult. And I know Dawn is not here, so that's why I can use her. She may find it difficult to forgive that person with no substance than it would Jackie, who is her friend and has great substance. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? That's selective obedience. That's respected, respect of persons. Now, how would I characterize Don? I would say Don does not love people. That's the bottom line. She does not love people. When you have selective, when you take the principles of God and you're selective with love, you're not a lover. You don't love with the love of God. And if push comes to shove, she doesn't love Jackie with the love of God. Not with the love of God. She fellowships and Conrad's with Jackie. They have some things that they have in common. But when it comes to the love of God, the love of God is shared abroad. Are you hearing God? The love of God is shared abroad. The, it, the scripture says the light from the love of Christ is shared abroad in our hearts. There's no darkness inside of us. So there's no place in us for unforgiveness. So it doesn't matter what the condition the individual is in, we will always forgive. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? Now, I'm trying to think of a, there's, a, there's, a, I'm try, there's another principle inside of that. I'm trying to think of a scenario that will explain it. But what I've observed is we don't cut the slack, you. 
You don't, you don't cut slack to people that you consider distasteful. People that as I was I was I'm thinking of a, of a of an example. I'm thinking of something that happened. Um, my, my my well, I have a helper. And when I leave town, like I just I left when I left. I left to go to Founders Week. And I didn't come back for like three and a half weeks. Uh -huh. I was gone for almost four weeks. So I, every time I leave town, I tell my helper, I said, well, I'm going to be gone. Uh, Daniel is, is, is down in Ochi or somewhere working. And <clears throat> there's no, really no need for you to, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, Nesta, we'll see to her eating and whatnot. But. There's no really need for you to come to, to, the, to the house while I'm gone. So I would give my helper that time off and pay her and tell her that on Friday you, you pick up your check or whatever, you know. And so I would tell her, well, I'm going to be gone for 10 days and you come back just the day before I come back and tidy up the house or whatever. So every time I leave town, I do that. I don't think, I think Miss Jill loves me. I think she <laughs> Amen. She called, she said, you my doc. <laughs> you my doctor. She called me doctor. You my doctor. <laughs> Amen. But I would give her that time off. Now, I was talking about that to someone. Uh, well, someone, I was, I was mentioning, making mention of it that I'm going to give her that time off. And the person that I was talking to just could not understand that. Couldn't understand why why would I do that? Why would you do that? You know? And and that's just, you know, whatever. Now, this is where I want to go with that. This is where I, I want to show you a mindset that is void of love. Totally void of love. If we love people, we're able to consider their disposition. If we love people, we put ourselves in their shoes. Are you hearing God? When I look at my helper that is probably 59 years old, still trying to work, I would want to do everything I could to make her life easier. Does that make sense to anybody? You guys are looking at me strange like I'm preaching on another planet or something. Amen. I would want to do everything in my power to make this person's life easier. You know why I done that? Because I would consider why did God bring her to me? Why did God choose this person to be my helper? Huh? Why did he do that? He, she could have been working for someone else. And here's a woman that's 60 years old, nearly 60 years old, that is still trying to work. Hello. Uh, okay. Okay. If, if, this, if I look at her, I think of myself. Or if that was my mother that is almost 60 years old and still trying to work, catching a cab, catching a bus, catching a, a bus, then walking up the hill, hallelujah, to get to work, rain or shine, hello, then get off, got to walk down the hill, wait on a bus if it's storming. That takes her another hour to get home. <coughs> and she has to do that every day for five days a week. Cook, clean, wash, iron, all of that stuff for that little bit of money. What she make in a week, we pay maids a day. 
And that's the truth. In fact, in fact, our maids in America make more in a day than, than your helpers make in a week. Glory to God. We, and they'll tell you I'm not doing windows. And some of them tell you I don't do floors. <laughs> and that's just real. You're going to pay those people $75 to $100 a day U.S. to work in your house. Amen. And then when you find a person that will work all the week for less than that, to me, that's slavery. I call it because that's where I'm from. You, it's, it's your culture, so that's the way you grew up in it. You grew up in it, and the economy here is so different, so it's not slavery to you. But in my, in my system, that's slavery. That's just a little above slavery, slave labor. Amen. In fact, our government would not allow us to pay a person that, that's that kind of salary. We would be arrested. A fine. Amen. So if it, so I'm looking at the labor that this woman has to do. I'm looking at that. Colleen, you done caught on by now, right? Because you don't want to have to get pay her. Glory to God. You, and I know you'd be like, Doc, is Doc, where's Doc? Doc be gone. How many, how many weeks? And you're still paying her. Am I right? Yes. Amen. This, I'm not going to let this lady... Glory to God, miss a paycheck. And, and, if, and if I can make her life easier, that's my point. When God put people in your life, it is so that you can help better that person. Come on. Are you hearing? Whatever God gives you is to be shared with others. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Amen. This stuff that we want to hold on to. Huh? And, and, and like, you, you see, some of you would be, I'm talking about what your issue is now. Because some of your issues is pointed out in little things. You know, uh, somebody may say, you may have a help and you say, well, boy, she sure eats a lot. Hallelujah. Maybe your helper, you may say, boy, she sure eats a lot. Then that means she's hungry. See, now you're going to go right there where Nigel went. She just greeted. <laughs> but it's food. It's food. And if a person is eating food, they're consuming it, God, if you see, you got to stop and look at the fact that God continues to supply you. He's continuing to supply you. My point is this, that once we make it, once we get where we're comfortable, we should never want to deny someone else to come where we are. It's like we look down our nose at them and we don't want them to enjoy the things that we are enjoying. Oh, come on, somebody. Am I making any sense to you? Glory to God. I come out of my bedroom because I spend 90% of my time at my desk working. 98% of my time I spend at the desk working in the bedroom. Glory to God. And I come out of the bedroom, and Miss, Miss Jell, she's just working. She's just working away. She's in the kitchen. She's in this laundry room. She's working away. And I come out and say, Miss Jell, why don't you sit down? Just sit down. I want to see you sit. Just sit. And, 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 it, and it's, it, it, you know, and she'll fix the food and put it on. The, I know this is not your culture, but it's mine. She'll fix food and put it on the table. Glory to God. And I said, why don't you sit down and eat? See, because I'm one of those people, if I work in a restaurant, don't, t don't have me cooking the food and I can't taste it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when I come in, I want, her, I want her to relax. Sit down. When we get tired, we sit and we rest. But there's some of you that if you got to help, you want to see them working every minute of the day. I entertained a helper that was working for someone, 
glory to God. And she said, I work for this lady. And, and with, when you're working for her, you work till you drop. And that's true. You don't want to see them sit down. Don't want to see them relax on your furniture. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, <laughs> this ain't in the book, but this is, this is my heart. God put this in my heart. I'm talking about what's your issue. And you're looking at culture. Culture should not be a barrier that separates you from the love of God. The love of God should supersede culture. Yeah. Come on, somebody. See, when we say what is your issue, this, this, this culture thing that you got, this British culture, and I'm not trying to kill your culture. Some of it need to die. Some of it just need to die because it creates a great gulf. It creates, it separates saints from saints. Glory to God. It, it, glory to God. What do you do when a helper becomes a pastor? You got a problem, glory to God. Amen. If these tables are for ministers right here, glory to God, and, and, and somebody with no substance, glory to God, from down in Trenchtown or East Kingston or Bath or somewhere where, where it's just a hood, and God raised them up, some of you get a, little, get a little tinkle in your little heart when they come and sit to the table. That's designed for ministers. Oh, I'm, on, I'm in the house. Yeah. That's a gulf. It separates you from those people, and it separates you from God. Because whenever we have a mindset that elevates us above people, we are not walking after the Spirit. We should not have any mindset that says, I'm better than this person. Are y'all hearing God? Ooh, I'm in trouble now. Praise you, Jesus. Bishop Long, you want to take over? <laughs> Hallelujah. Character is our true spiritual location. And what I was going to say earlier is there's no way for you to deal inside of something a certain way, or have a certain mindset that's not of Christ and not know it. There's no way if you save. If you save. If I walked out of my room and Miss Jill was sitting down drinking her tea, chilling, and I felt a certain way about that, I need to examine that. See, that's what you don't do. You don't examine that feeling because that emotion is your true spiritual location. Are you hearing God? That emotion is your true spiritual location. Character. Character. Are you learning? If we will not obey the word of God in something as simple as being kind enough to restore those we say we love, then wherein is the character and love of Christ manifested? We have loved ones, people that we say we love, husbands, wives. This, and now, now, now let, me, let me just take the cover off this. Let me take the cover off of this. I have never seen so many, it's like these last two years, I have never seen so many failed marriages in the church. I don't understand it. Failed marriages. Hallelujah. There's some marriages, husbands and wives, Both saved, full of the Holy Ghost. Both sitting under the same word. 
Same word. Live in the same house. Sleep in the same bed. But really don't want to have anything to do with each other. Don't get along. Somebody always mad. What in the world is that? What is that? How do you pass that off as God? Where does God stand in that? Someone asked me this the other day. He says, why are there so many failed marriages in the church? Because somebody refuses to obey the word of God. Simple as that. You got people, you got two people or one that just won't walk in the spirit. And they both say, they both hear the same word. Pride, nobody's going to give in. I want what I want, you want what you want. If I give in, you're going to dominate me. If this, if I got to hold my ground. You don't speak to me, I don't speak to you. You don't touch me, I don't touch you. What in the world is that? What is that? And then we come to church. How do you praise God on top of that? How do you praise him? Where are you going with that? I wish God would give me the liberty. I would just tell you what you need to do. Hallelujah. But where do you go with that? What pastor, if you're a pastor, and you and your wife cannot get along, if you, let me go here, you might have a wife that is totally rebellious to God. I mean, the opposite of everything Christ is, but where are you? Do, are you in the spirit? Regardless of what she does, are you in the spirit? Hmm? Huh? Are you in the spirit? Because if you're not in the spirit, if you don't live in the spirit in that house, what do you have to say when you get here? What are you going to talk about? You can't preach on love. Forbearance, long-suffering, you don't, what's, what's your message? What, what's, what's the message? That's hypocrisy. That's hypocrisy. Glory to God. And women, wives, glory to God. I've never seen so many husbands complaining as I have in the last two years. In the church, complaining that there's no intimacy in their marriage. There are very little, extremely no, no intimacy. What in the world is that? When we have scripture that said defraud not one another, except to be for fasting and prayer. What is that? What's your issue? If you're living like that, and you really think you're going to make it in, you're going to come out here and you're going to praise God, hello, defrauding your spouse at home, but you're going to come to the church and you're going to praise God, clap your hands, stump your feet, shout the victory, and waltz right on into heaven. I don't think so. Our training ground is our home. 
And we are so selfish and things like that because our children see it. And some children, some of these young people say, based upon what I've seen, I don't want to get married. Based upon what they see their parents do, they're like, oh, Lord. I don't, want to, I, don't, I don't know if I want to get married. Are y'all hearing God? Are you hearing God? We're supposed to set examples. And we were not setting a, a pastor, or a, a, a husband, pastor or not, a husband, supposed to set an example of Christ in his house. A wife supposed to set the example of a virtuous woman in submission to her husband. Come on, somebody. And if, you, if that's your issue, go to God. God dealing with it today. I wouldn't walk out of here, glory to God, not have that issue intact. I would fix that. I would fix that. Or do we, are we going to be guilty of selective obedience? I'll obey God in some things, but that, no. Mm -mm. See, because in order to obey God in that, you might just have to submit to somebody else. You may just have to submit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might just have to submit. Are y'all working with me? Hello? Glory to God. You just might have to submit. Husbands might have to do some, mid, some submitting. Wives may have to do some submitting. Are you hearing God? What is God truly saying? He's saying, I'm looking at your routine lifestyle, your everyday life. And you've got some issues that you need to resolve. I've had these issues. That's why I can preach about them. I've had to overcome these very same issues. Disposition. What is our disposition? What is your disposition? How would people describe you? I was talking to someone recently. Glory to God. And they said this, that this person is mean. That's how they would describe this person as mean. Just mean. How are you a minister of God and mean? A pastor and just mean. What in the world is that? Mean, just mean. 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 Some people just mean. I don't understand meanness. Sometimes meanness comes about as a way of control. It's control. Harsh. Unyielding. Got to have your way. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, this is one of those practical messages today, huh? Hallelujah. We, uh, we, ain't, we ain't doing a whole lot of shouting and running around. Hallelujah, praise God. Thank God for that. Some of y'all saying, boy, I'd be glad when she shut up. <laughs> you, and you know why some of y'all feeling that? Because some of the, because whatever your disposition is, if I'm naming it, there's somebody sitting in here know that that's you. That's why you want me to hush. I ain't going to hush. Hallelujah. We need to change, saints. When we come to church, we come to change. We come to find out what are the issues in our life that God is not satisfied with. Come on. These are not deep things. These are things that we just live out every day. What do we tell our loved ones and our children and whatnot? What do parents say to their children when, when what do you say? I, I, I just, I'm just curious. What do you say to your children that are, that are, uh, 
adult children, and, 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 and you and your spouse are both uh, saved and in the same church, hearing the same word, and your children know that, that, you, that you guys don't have nothing to do with each other. What do you say to them? What, what, how do you witness to them? Has God ceased to be in your marriage? He's powerful enough to deal with their marriage, but he can't fix yours? Hello? That takes away hope. When people don't see God working with us, it takes away hope. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, connect the dots. You need to connect the dots. I keep saying this, and sooner or later, somebody's going to get it. That negative disposition that you have, that, that spiritual location that you have that is not of God, That way that you are, that is not the character of Christ, has a price. It comes with a price. It comes with consequences. God, God allows the enemy to come and see. See, when you die walking after the spirit, you're on the devil's turf. And the Lord will allow the enemy to touch your house, touch your children, touch your spouse, Touch your finances, touch your health, touch all your loved ones, and you'll never connect that dot. You'll never think that it's because you just don't live holy. You'll never consider that all of this negative is happening to me because I will not obey God. Are you hearing God? I just will not obey God. And that's why God has turned the hellhounds loose on me. All hell has broke loose in my house. And you'll never, never even consider that it's because I'm not holy. I don't live holy. I have selective obedience. And let me tell you something, saying we can put, we can put up that front. For people, we want people to see us a certain way. We can put up that front, honey, but we can't get by God. God sees us. God sees us. God does not want us, he does not want us to be phonies. He wants us to be real. What happens when you live like that and it's disaster come in your house and you need, you need to pray? You can't even pray. Because you got a heart full of iniquity. You got iniquity against your spouse, iniquity against this child, iniquity against this saint, iniquity against that one, and this, glory to God, just walk around with a bunch of iniquity. God not hearing your prayer. You know, if I pray, if I pray, when I'm praying, I know when I'm not reaching God. I know. Do you know? You know when you're not reaching God. And when you, when you start to pray and you know you're not reaching God, it's time to stop and examine self and see where am I standing with God. Because he said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, he will not hear my prayer. So all that praying and all that, ooh, and getting with the saints and, I'm just, oh, I just, I just want to change. Oh, God, the word was so good. Oh, this word touched my heart. But then get back in that situation and cannot live it. Will not live it. We come out here and we make all those, all of that, those declarations and what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And, uh, and God really met me today. Oh, that word penetrated my heart. Glory to God. Let me tell you something. When... Come here, uh, Pastor. When, when you make a declaration in your heart and you are going to fix 
you just determine that you're going to fix this thing that God is just, God has ministered to you and you're going to fix this thing, glory to God. And soon as you get home, soon as you get home, the person that you're supposed to fix it with, they start showing out. Now, you'd have been out here crying at the altar. Oh, God, forgive me. Oh, God, I know I didn't pass that test. Oh, God, just give me another chance. God, if you just redeem the time, give me another chance, God. Oh, please, God, wash my slate clean. Oh, holy God. He said, okay. He gave you another chance. You go home, and that same person, you say, you know, sweetheart, I am so sorry. You know, I, I just... And, he, and his response is, it's about time for you to repent. <laughs> and he responds with a whole lot of pride. What you mean? <laughs> See, you done forgot what you did at the altar. You forgotten that? You forgotten that you asked God for another chance. You ask God to give you another chance to pass that test. He gave you another chance. The trial was waiting on you. That's the other chance. He giving you another chance to pass it. So here comes the trial. When the trial comes, what are you going to do? Same thing you did in the first one. Fail it. Hallelujah. You know why you fail it? You know why you can't maintain it here? When you get it face to face with the opposition? You know why? You know why you fail it? Because when you were repenting, when you were out here, there was an anointing flowing. And the anointing is the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is a spirit of conviction. And you got on your knees and prayed because you don't like the way you felt. That spirit makes you feel bad when you know you're in a bad place with God. Don't you? You feel bad. And you repent because of how you feel. You want to get rid of that bad feeling. There's a difference in wanting to get rid of that bad feeling and wanting to change. Come on. You, that's why you find a lot of people go to the altar over and over again and, and, and do the same thing when they get up over and over again. Why? Because they, did, they felt bad because they were in the presence of the Holy Spirit. They felt bad, and they, 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 I tell you who had the spirit, Saul. Saul, many times Saul, glory to God, especially the time when, when David came into, the, into his tent and, and took his, his, uh, his sword, I believe it was, cut, his, cut pieces of his garment off. And he realized that David was right there in the middle of the night and could have killed him. And he said, oh, David. My son, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm wicked and thou art just. Come on home, David, and I'll do you no harm. Soon as that anointing wore off, he continued to try to kill David. He felt bad. That's why he repented. He felt bad. That's why he went through the motions of repentance. That's what it is. It's not real true repentance. You're going through the motions of repentance. You're doing just like Esau. Esau sought repentance with tears, but he couldn't find none. You know why? Because his heart never changed. See, when you get on your knees and you're crying, you got to make sure your heart is changing. If that heart doesn't change, when you finish crying and, the mute and, 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 and you walk out of here and face this trial, when you face this trial again, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to do the same thing. Why? Because you're seeking deliverance. See, see Esau cried, sought after repentance because he had lost the birthright. Not bec not, he didn't seek repentance for changing his heart for even selling it. Are you hearing God? He sold it because he didn't regard it. Amen. His heart had never changed about that. He was just crying because he didn't have it anymore. And it dawned on him what he done gave up. 
And when you get on your knees and you weep before the Lord and you say, God, give me another chance. I'm failing these tests. I'm failing test after test. Glory to God. I've obeyed you in this, but I failed in that. I obeyed you in this and I failed in that. God, just give me another chance. Look for the test. It's coming. That's the, that's the chance. He's, let, he's letting the trial come again to see if you're going to pass it. Are y'all hearing God? Are you hearing God? Thank you. I learned how to serve God through serving him. I learned how to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I learned that the day I hear his voice, not to harden my heart. I learned that. I learned that when God demands a change, I have to change. Not tomorrow, but right then. I learned to serve God by not ignoring the voice of his spirit. Some of you ignore it. I heard Mike preach one time. When you hear God talking, resolve the issue right then. Resolve that issue. Don't wait. To, don't say, well, I'm going to wait till I get home. No, resolve it right then. Now, we've talked about a bunch of stuff. And some of you, some of you are guilty. Some of you are guilty. Some of you are walking in some of these these deficiencies. If you really heard the word, you know what you would do? This is what I did when I was coming up. When I was coming up in the ranks, glory to God, when I heard God, I responded immediately. I didn't wait because I didn't know if I was going to get a chance later. Whenever I heard God, I responded immediately. Now, some of you have heard the Lord. Some of you have heard your issue. There's a lot more issues we got to go through, but I think we've gone through some that pretty much blanket this room today. Mm -hmm. Your character. What is your character? Married or single, what is your character? These tests that you're continuously failing, continuously failing. Why? Why are you continuously failing those tests? Why? The repentance, are you, are you repenting because you just feel bad? You don't like the way you feel? Or are you seeking a heart change? Because if you're just seeking, if you, if you're just seeking repentance because, because you feel bad, you're going to do the same thing again when you leave here. You're going to live the same way. I look at some people living in, in situations and living in, in dispositions, certain dispositions. I said, God, are they going to die like that? Are they going to die before they change that situation, that disposition? Because if they die, they're going to hell. They're going, they're going straight. Their soul is going to plummet into hell. I remember when, when that lady, there's a lady that, that used to come here, glory to God. And, and I remember Charlene coming over here to, to minister to her because she was Bad mouth in the ministry, bad mouth in Bishop Lona. And, and, and I remember Charlene sitting down with that woman and saying, you know what, you need to take your mouth off of God's, God's apostle, God's uh, minister. And she didn't pay that any regard. She didn't pay any regard to that. And a week or two later, a week later, she was dead. And I remember going, looking at her body lying on the sidewalk. And I remember Pastor Walsh brought me a chair to sit down. And as soon as I sat in that chair, I saw her soul plummeting into hell. I saw it just, just plummeting, just going so fast right into hell. She didn't have time to say, God, forgive me. God, have mercy. What happens if you just drop dead? Well, you don't have time to say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, have mercy on me. Die with your shoes on. Mm -hmm. 
You're not passing these tests? You're not passing these tests? You can't find repentance? You get up doing the same thing? Talk to God about changing your heart. Say, God, help me change my heart. Because your, your salvation is not predicated on what somebody else does. If the person, if, 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 if someone is always offering you opposition, you, still, you can still pass the test. Are you hearing God? I would say, God, just have mercy on me. Just have mercy on me. Because if I die now, I'm not going to make it in. I'm not going to make it in. If God talking to you, you need to come talk to him. You need to come talk. If you got an issue, and if, you, and if there's someone here in this building that you need to get it right with, get it right. And say, I'm getting it right once and for all. God say, leave your gift at all. Come, go get it right with the person first. God, I need to get it right. 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 I'm not righteous in this. I'm not righteous in this. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not righteous in this. Those of you that are watching by way of television, this is your chance. This is your chance to get it right with God. This is your chance to say, well, I'm, you know what? I failed so many tests, so many trials. And I did repent because I felt bad. I didn't like the way I felt. But I did, got up and did the same thing over again. I need a heart change. My heart needs to change. If that's you, kneel down right where you are. Make an altar out of your couch, your bed, your chair, wherever you be. Just say, God, have mercy on me. Forgive me. Forgive me. If you're riding along in your automobile listening to this, say, God, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Those of you in the auditorium, there's some more of you that need to give God some, some honor this morning. I say, God, it's just me. I know you're talking to me. I know it's me. I'm going to ask our prophetess to come and pray for us this morning. Hallelujah. Saints, reach out to him. Reach out to him as she pray. Reach out. Hallelujah. If you need to come to this altar, come and just sit before the Lord. And let us reach out. Holy Father, you have come to us today and you have shown us, O oh Lord, your holiness. Your holiness, dear Lord Jesus Christ, which you dispensed to us when you brought us into your kingdom. To make us one, one with you. You suffered so much, dear Savior. The suffering could not have been more intense, dear Jesus. And your suffering was for every one of us. Everyone, Jesus, in whom you have placed your spirit, because your spirit is you. Your spirit is holy. Your spirit is righteous. Your spirit, Holy Father, takes us into deep, deep, deep communion with you, O oh Holy Lord God. That is a purpose, O oh Holy Father, why you have given to us your spirit, your very life. Forgive us, Father. 
where we have moved away from you. When we have ignored your spirit within us, oh Holy Father, please forgive us. Please forgive us, Lord. You tell us, Jesus, that you're coming when you come. When you come, you're coming and looking for people who have no, 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 nothing outside of you. That you are looking for yourself, dear Father, in every one of us. And those who are here, Lord Jesus Christ, at the altar, you see their heart. And Father, when, you, when, when we open our hearts to you, dear Lord, fervently, dear Father, wanting you to move in our lives, to change us, to make us the very, very reflection of you, dear Father. You don't see any difference between you and us, dear Father. Dear Lord, we know that you have a ready response. A ready response, Father. A ready response. And you have not been leaving us, Father God, just to operate on our own because we cannot operate on our own. We have your life on the inside of us, dear Heavenly Father, and it is that life that's moving, that's life that's operating. But dear Lord and Father, you have seen where we have resisted your movement. Forgive us, Lord. Just forgive us, Father. Just forgive us. Forgive us, Father. Let it be so deeply ingrained in us, dear Lord God and Father, that if you choose to take us from this earth now, oh, holy Lord God and Father, you are looking for someone who has who shows no difference between us and you. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, it's a moment by moment by moment communion with you dear Lord every day every moment that we are awake it's a communion with you dear Jesus hallelujah that everything we think everything that we say everything that we do moves out of a heart that is totally committed to you help us father help us help us Lord help us Help us, Lord, help us. Help us, Lord, help us. Keep us in that holy place. That holy place. That holy place. Dear Jesus Christ, the things that are around us, these are not the things, oh Lord, that tell us who we are. No, you are the one. You are the one with your very life inside of us who tells us who we are supposed to be. So have mercy, Lord, on us. Thank you for the message that you have brought today, coming straight out of the throne of heaven to us today, oh Holy Lord. That's why we got ready. That's why we got dressed. That's why we came here. That's why we sat down. Hallelujah. It's not a matter of custom, oh Holy Lord, God and Father, but to commune with you in the way that you have chosen, oh Holy Lord, God and Father. So let it be that Lord, and nobody resists you today. Ayababahasa, Mayabahose Tebehesha. You want a body, Lord, that belongs to you. It costs you so much. Every day, let us think about how much it cost you father how much it cost your son went into the rooms of hell when he was on the earth to save us have mercy Lord have mercy father let this be a new day daddy Lord in the life of every one of us 
who is here, who has listened to you, who has heard your cry, because it's a cry that you have made to us. Oh, Holy Lord Christ, help us, Daddy. Help us. Help us, Father. Cause us to see that you put before us heaven and hell today. Let us make a distinct choice. And that choice is for you. Whatever language we come with, dearly Lord, whether we come in English or we come in the patois that we know, let God let us, when we say, me now go hell. Hellfire is not my home. Heaven is my home. Heaven is my home. And I'm going to ask you to do something before our Father raise your hand if you want to say heaven is my home. And say heaven is my home. Say heaven is my home. Heaven is my home. But look here now. Heaven is my home is not when I die. Heaven is my home now, right now, every moment, every moment, every moment. Some of you are not going to be as old as I am on the face of the earth. We go as children, we go as teenagers. We go as young adults. We go as middle-aged people. And we go as old people. We are all in the same boat. Hallelujah. And let's raise our hands and give the Lord thanks for who he is to us. Moment by moment. By moment, we give you thanks, precious Lord. Hallelujah. trust that you have enjoyed amen the service today those of you that are online those of you that are watching by way of television don't let this word slip God has been good to us he's spoken directly to us and because he has we are not going to ignore it but we're better for it. We're not going to go back and do the same thing again. I'm going to say, God, my heart changed today. If nothing else happened, let your heart change. Let your heart change. Your body will get in line if your heart change. Just change your heart, saints. Let, let the Holy Spirit penetrate that stony heart. Let him break it down. Let the word of God break down that stony heart. And say, God, I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing. It's not going to kill you to just humble yourself. Just humble yourself. And let us not leave here blaming other people for where we are and what's going on in our lives. Let's don't blame other people because regardless of what anyone does, we can still be holy. We can still be holy. 
Hallelujah. We love him today. Don't we love him? Hallelujah. Those of you that have been watching by way of television, online, however you got this broadcast, we love you today and we hope that you're, you have indeed enjoyed it and we hope that your life has been changed just by watching us. This is Dr. Banks and all the BTI family saying, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus.